Yo, what's good people? It's Jay Cactus, and in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you a little tour of the home studio. I put up a poll a few weeks ago and asked everyone what new video they wanna see, and most people voted for the home studio tour and equipment review. So I'm gonna take you through everything that I own and use right now and let you know my thoughts on it. So let's get into it. All right, so when you walk into the room, it looks like this. It's nothing too big, nothing too crazy, but it's definitely got everything that I need. In this section here, We've got the digital piano, which I'll talk more about in a bit when I start going through all of the equipment. But you can see I've got the OGs there too, big impact. Over here, this is just where people chill. So if people are recording, maybe I'm mixing down, they can just sit back and relax for a bit. Or even sometimes I might take a break, just sit back, listen to some music, read up on certain things. And then over here, this is basically just where I store everything. And we've got the books there as well, because knowledge is power, you should know that. Over here, this is just where people record. I haven't got the mic set up on there right now just because I use that same mic for my YouTube videos, which again, I'll talk more about soon. But yeah, over here, this is just, this is where all the magic happens, man. This is like where I make all my beats, film all my YouTube videos. Yeah, I'm gonna break down all of the equipment for you. I just wanted to show you the room real quick. Nothing crazy, but you wanted to see it, so here it is. So yeah, that was just a quick, quick tour, but I'll talk you through all of the equipment now. All right, so the first thing that I'll show you is the mic that I've been using, and the mic is the SEX1. I've had this mic for years. I didn't buy it with the intention of making YouTube videos. I bought it to record vocals because it came as a bundle. So it came with that reflection filter and this little shock mount and the pop shield as well. So the bundle wasn't too expensive. I think it was like 200 pounds. It's all about how you mix the vocals after. So once I've recorded, I'll add like EQs and compression and get my vocal sounding a bit better. And the monitor that I'm using is a Samsung UE5OD. I think that's the name anyway. I'll leave a link to it in the description. It's a 4K monitor and I actually like the picture. It wasn't too expensive either. But the problem with 4K monitors is that a lot of VSTs haven't been made for 4K resolution. So sometimes when I'm cooking up in FL, I'll open a plugin and it's tiny and I have to adjust some settings to stretch it out. But then it looks stretched and it just gets annoying. The thing that's attached to the monitor, I'll show you quickly again. This is the BenQ Screen Bar Plus. So shout out to BenQ for sending me this. And you should all know by now, if someone sends me something or if I'm reviewing anything, then it'll always be an honest review. I won't just say things for the sake of it, just to get paid. I'm not being paid for this video, but I do fully rate this bar. It's a monitor light, so there's no screen glare, and it comes with this here. So if you move this, you can adjust the brightness with it. But if you hold this button, it detects the brightness of the room, and then it sets its own brightness. If you're anything like me and you're looking at screens for long periods of time, I think the average person looks at screens for about five or six hours per day. I don't know if that includes looking at your phone or if that's just work, but five or six hours per day, sometimes I'm up here for like 12, 13 hours straight. And yo, that must be damaging my eyes so much. It got to a point where I was like struggling to sleep at night and I didn't really know what it was. And my girl said to me, maybe it's because you're looking at screen so much throughout the day and then you're trying to go straight to sleep. Thank you sent me this bar around about the same time. And since I've started using it, I don't know if it's just a coincidence, but I've honestly been sleeping much easier. It could be because it's reducing the glare and it's less strain on my eyes, but I don't know. But either way, I rate the bar. So shout out to BenQ again. And then the speakers that you can see or monitors should I say, are the Rocket 5s from KRK. So I'll just show you them quick. So these monitors I've had for like, I wanna say seven or eight years. They've never failed on me, they've always done the job. It might get to a point where I wanna upgrade them and get something with more power, but to be honest, the thing with monitors is, if you don't have your room properly acoustically treated, like I've got acoustic panels, but it still doesn't mean that the room is properly treated. No matter how good your speakers are, you're still not gonna get an accurate sound because you're gonna get reflections, you're gonna get certain frequency buildups. So I wouldn't worry too much about the speakers, to be honest, as long as you know how they translate to other systems. I know in this room with these monitors, the bass is always quite high. So when I'm cooking up beats, I might think that the bass is sounding fine, but then when I play it on a different system, like in a car or just different speakers, then the bass is kind of low. So to compensate for that, when I'm making beats, I might just push the bass up a little bit more than usual. Or you could just turn the bass down on the speakers at the back of them. And whilst we're talking about KRK, I might as well show you the headphones that I've been using. So these headphones are the KNS 6400s. So again, these headphones, I must have had them for like seven or eight years. I bought them around about the same time as I got the speakers and there's nothing wrong with them. They're not too expensive. And yeah, I feel like they give me a, a pretty accurate sound. Maybe the bass is a little bit too high, but that could just be because they're closed back headphones. What I mean by that is the actual back of them is closed off. So these are good to use if people are recording vocals and you don't want the sound to leak into the mic. But one thing that I did just buy is the DT 
990s. So I've heard loads of people talking about these. These are open back headphones, which basically means that the back of them is kind of open so the sound can go out. So these are good for mixing because you can hear everything. You can hear the stereo field properly. It sounds like everything's just surrounding you. Whereas the close back headphones, it sounds like everything's tight within your head and that can cause like bass to sound loud, for example. But the thing with the new headphones is because they're 250 ohms, I don't even have the power to power them properly. I've got an audio interface, which I'll talk to you about in a second. But even with that, I've been having to turn up the volume to like the maximum level just to get some kind of good audio. So I think I'm going to have to send the headphones back or just buy something like a headphone amp or a new audio interface, but it's kind of long. And yeah, because I mentioned the interface, I might as well show it you. So the interface that I've been using is the Personas Audio Box USB. I think it's 96. So again, nothing too crazy with that one. If you're literally just making YouTube videos or you want to record something, then it's fine. It's got two inputs. It's only got one headphone output, which is probably the only drawback because sometimes when people are recording, we have to like swap headphones all the time. So it would be easier if I could just listen to it at the same time. One thing that I'll say is I have been getting some latency issues and that basically means that when people are recording, there's a bit of a delay from when they actually speak to when it's played back in the software. But it also means that there's a delay in their headphones when they're speaking as well. So if they want to listen to themselves as they're recording, then it definitely throws them off. I don't know if it's definitely the interface causing that, but I have got the buffer size down and my computer should be fast enough to handle that. So I don't know, it could be. But moving on to the MIDI keyboard that I've been using, it's the Alesis. I think it's VI61 or V161. So it's 61 keys. It's got the drum pads too. I like this keyboard, man. Like the keys, they're semi-weighted, so it kind of feels like a real piano. It's not full weighted, but definitely a lot better than the Oxygen 61 that I had last time. The one downside to the keyboard is setting it up in FL. You can just plug and play with the keys. So these work fine. And the pads, I think at first, but if you want to use these functions like this stop, record and play and fast forward, yo, it was a pain to set up. I couldn't really find anything online. I went back and forth with the support team and it turned out that I had to download the software, change a bunch of the CC numbers and reroute everything. And it was just long. The last one that I had, the Oxygen 61, I could just select that from the drop down in FL and everything was good to go. So all of this equipment is connected to a custom built PC. So down here, I don't really know how to build PCs, but I had one of my boys tell me what parts to get he set everything up for me i'll list some of the parts in the description but i think the processor is a ryzen 7 3800x there's 48 gigabytes of ram i've got a hard drive for all of my backups and then an m2 ssd for running windows and then a separate ssd just for contact banks because you know how big them contact banks can get and then the desk which is holding everything a lot of people have asked me about this desk but it's not a desk that you can buy anywhere so with the desk i found one online that i like the look of it was a music production one. I took the measurements from that and then I sent it to my boy who's a carpenter and then he built this desk. So it is a custom desk. It cost around 200, maybe 250 to build, but it was still a lot cheaper than the actual desk. And he built these for free. So these are just kind of makeshift monitor stands, but they match the desk. So that was a nice addition. And then whilst we're down here, the keyboard that I'm using is the Razer Sinosa. It's nothing too expensive, but it's a backlit keyboard so I can see what I'm typing at night. And the mouse pad, custom made mouse pad, just standard Logitech mouse so I've got the mouse pad and then I've got the phone case to match and then over here it's just a wireless charger and yo I didn't even mention the LEDs behind the monitor it's not even a real studio until you get LEDs behind the monitor so these are just cheap Amazon ones I just bought I think it was like five meters just so I had some extras and then put them all across the back of the TV I was gonna do them on the panels, but it was just looking a bit too messy, so I didn't bother in the end. But yeah, with the LED strips, you usually get one of these remotes. Everyone knows about these. Just to quickly show you, you might not be able to see the colors right because it's daytime, but yeah, you can basically change it to any color that you want. Everything else in the room is just little additions. So of course we got the legendary cactus light, the plant and the acoustic panels, the guitar, which I have no idea how to use. So the acoustic panels, these are just custom built. They're quite expensive to buy proper ones. So me and my dad just took some rock wool. We got some wood for the edges and then some cheap fabric to cover everything. They definitely do make a difference. I do still hear a lot of room reverb, but before they were in, it was just mad in here. So yeah, they're worth doing. And then the last thing that I need to show you is the digital piano, which I briefly showed you before. So the piano that I've got is the Yamaha P45, I think. Yeah, P45. So it's a full 
88 key piano and I like this because I'm still taking piano lessons. You can actually use it as a MIDI keyboard too but I like my keyboard to be right in front of me when I'm making beats and this was just a bit too big for the desk and it wasn't at the right level so I keep this one purely for practicing piano and then keep the MIDI keyboard for making beats. And one thing that I almost forgot to show you is the actual camera that I've been using to film these videos and the camera is a Sony a7C and I'm using the Sigma 1.4 lens. So I like the lens just because it lets in a lot of light so you can get a blurry background if you want it. And I used to have a softbox light that went up here just to brighten myself up for videos. But with this lens, I don't really need that. So usually I'll just put an LED light on top of the camera. I haven't got that on right now. And I'll show you the camera, but I'm holding it to record myself. So it might be pretty tricky. All right, so I could show you in the mirror. So I don't know if you can see that properly, but yeah, this is the camera, it's the A7C. I'm using a tripod to hold it up right now, which you shouldn't really do for vlog style videos, but I don't normally make this style of videos. And honestly, I wouldn't say that you need a camera as expensive as this. I think the camera cost around about two grand, but the one that I was using before that was the Canon M50, which I can't remember how much I paid. It might've been about 350. The only reason I didn't like that is because it had a recording limit of 30 minutes. But for the price difference, I haven't noticed a massive difference in quality anyway. But yeah, I know some people just use a webcam when they make it tutorials you could even use your phone i think simon sabida did that so don't feel like you need one of these cameras to make videos because you don't so yeah i hope you like the video i know it's a lot different to the usual stuff that i've done but it's what most people voted for when they did the poll so i had to give them what they wanted but yeah i don't want anyone to think that you need all of this equipment to make beats because you don't when i first started all i had was a laptop and some dead logitech speakers and then i just upgraded things along the way i've been doing this for years so anytime i made some money through work or even birthdays or through music I'd always upgrade things. And I still know so many producers to this day that will just make beats on a laptop and headphones. Jester Beats is a good example. I interviewed him recently and he's been getting some crazy placements and he does everything from a laptop and AirPods. So don't let equipment be the thing that holds you back. You just need to start with what you've got and when the time's right, if you feel like you need to, then you can upgrade certain parts. So yeah, if you stuck with me throughout the video, even though I wasn't making any beats, then thank you so much for watching. I'll go back to normal cook-ups next time. So I'll see you then.